Should a person's life be judged by an exam? Well, this is a big question mark because most people's lives has been judged with a written examination which they face in their school, either in their upper school or high school. So, what effect does this have on the person and society as a whole? It is not supportive of social development. These exams are given to individuals at the teenage age, age of 16, 18, 19, 20, you name it. And at this age, the individual still developing, his personality is still growing, his brain is still growing, he's still understanding the world around him. He still tries to understand himself due to his adolescence, his hormones really playing with his emotions. So at this age, when you give a set of examinations and when you tell people, if you pass this exam, you'll have a fruitful life. And if you happen to fail them, your life is going to be miserable. Well, that's very wrong. Probably 20, 30 years ago, this was the case with most developing countries, especially. If a person fails his exam, his own family members, his parents, everyone will brand him as an illiterate person and make that person believe that he's not good enough to learn. That becomes the biggest demotivator for that individual. And that demotivation is carried right throughout life. So, when you demotivate a person, let's say when he's 16 years of age, and he tends to carry that through his entire lifetime. So his entire life becomes a failure because people had judged him based on a written examination. Most of the successful, creative people in this world, or even entrepreneurs, business people, are not all graduates nor people who have passed exams. But they believed in themselves. They believed knowledge can be learned from various sources not just limited to the syllabus given in your university or your school. But all people are not like that. Most people fall into the trap set by society itself. Because society is structured to flush people out and put them in lower states of income. That is the majority of them. And a few, 20%, will have the high paying jobs or the income. So they tend to call themselves of a higher class. So this is actually a planned social structure, which is implemented right across the planet. But, Wise human beings, when they realize it, they come out of it. But for the majority who don't have a guidance, a support to tell them, hey, just because you fail your exam when you're a teenager, that does not mean you have to stop learning. Because the human brain becomes fully grown or mature after the age of 21, 22, it depends at different age levels for different individuals based on their growth hormones and how their genetics 
his design. But when a person, when he passes the state of full maturity, when he feels that he is a complete mature person and can take decisions for himself and live life on his own, then she should always look at expanding his knowledge even though he has failed his school exams. Even if you cannot get into university, you can always learn things for free for a start online. If you want to get yourself certified, you have to pay a very small amount of money to a lot of online course providers, or they call themselves e-universities. They're very supportive. So, because learning it's one of the key building blocks to self-realization. Because once you understand your own self or go into practices of meditation, deep concentration, the knowledge that you have gained prior will help you assess your experiences. You will come across a lot of spiritual leaders who have has that self-experience, but they're illiterate. They don't have the knowledge to explain that self-experience. So they come with a lot of stories, call themselves various things. And while this happens is, it again misleads society. Because this spiritual realized person will have some certain psychic abilities. He can cure diseases. He can read your thoughts. But even he doesn't know how he's doing it. But he's doing it and people see it. And whatever he says, people tend to believe. And it's not the people's fault. I mean, the guy who realized it, it's his fault. He should build up his knowledge. Then, whatever he speaks will be very practical and scientific. And he'll be more, much appreciated and he'll be more supportive to society. You see such self-realized people as well, with that knowledge, who experience the self. Well, they're of a different level of guidance or different level of the guru, we call it. Or they can really teach people effectively and efficiently because they have gained large amounts of knowledge about the world. They'll keep on learning, they're still learning. Therefore, it's very important to understand that the exams do not determine your entire life. If you're not developed the ability to learn while schooling, that's not the end of the world. You keep on practicing concentration, simple methods of concentration. You can stare at an object, you can stare at a tree, you can focus on your breath. You can even listen to music. There are so many ways and methods. As you keep on practicing, the ability to grasp stimuli will increase. What is learning? It's all about grasping new stimuli from the eyes when you read, from the ears when you hear, from the nose when you smell. Learning is all related to your senses. So once you are able to observe the functioning of your senses through deep concentration. Learning becomes very easy. Now, people don't teach you this stuff in school, but this type of knowledge is very important for any growing child. First step to learning is to develop the power of concentration. But that's the difference between individuals who excel with their grades in school versus the people who fail. The levels of concentration. The person who excels biologically from childhood, his brain is wired to concentrate. Well, he doesn't know it, but it concentrates. He, doesn't, he, he might not even practice meditation or concentration, but the way he thinks is in a concentrated form. Versus a wandering mind, a child 
whose mind is just wavering here and there. They can't even sit in one place. They can't read a document for more than you know one minute. Uh, they are very disorganized mentally. So those people, the big issue is the power of concentration. So the first thing parents of schools need to teach children is how to concentrate. It's like teaching a child how to run a race, you know, how to practice you know, certain uh, things, you know, let's say even when you're learning or when you're playing. Uh, we tend to do a lot of things. That's also a type of concentration, but if you do it methodically and properly, then that experience and that development which helps the mind to get focus is much, far more superior than the other methods of learning to develop concentration. Therefore, your exams, the fear of failing, or if you have failed, all those can be overcome once you develop your brain power, once you develop your concentration power. And even better, with time, if you can pass into the states of meditation, then you have conquered your own self. You become the master of yourself. You are the guru for yourself. Therefore, don't give up and come out of the nutshell if you have failed your exams. Take the art of concentration into you and keep practicing. Develop your mind power and find the happiness and the life which you like to live and implement it and experience it.